Hey, good Wednesday morning. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Jim, stocks are down. Uh, Trump's speech last night triggering new concerns about a government shutdown. Yeah, I think it really triggered new concerns about the president. I mean, I think the speech was uh, over the top, and I think that you can now say that without worry, because since the CEOs have resigned from the councils, you realize that there are, there's a Trump who is uh, coherent and a Trump who is uh, rambling. And I think that the Trump last night was someone who you just felt like, you know what, this guy is uh, um, not in command of the presidency. Mm. And, um, and I think that maybe if people just come out and say that, who uh, uh, watch him, they'll realize that the speech he gave the night before was total command. And I think that it's worrisome for people that perhaps things are a little bit too uh, nutty, mm. just plain nutty. <laughs> And you asked Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff about President Trump last night on Mad Money. Right. I mean, he just said, look, I, you know, I'm not on the council. I offer advice. You offered good advice about the apprenticeship. I urge people to read the beginning of Mark Benioff mm. Salesforce.com conference call where he has some comments to say about uh, the political time. I know that even when you say that someone's anti-Nazi these days, uh, there are people who say, wait a second, let's not be so sweeping about the, anti about the Nazis. But I do find that... Um, that's uh, wrong. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about Salesforce's quarter. I mean, amazing results. Yeah, I mean, I think that initially people were selling this Salesforce because the stock, because they felt that the gross margins weren't as good. There was no guide up. But the, the, historically, the company has trounced the gross margins. So I think you just got to give them that. That's not their style to just routinely guide up and guide up and guide up to levels where uh, if there's any problem, they'll miss as they did. If you look at last year's quarter, they guided up and then Brexit happened. And they missed. And I think that they are a little more cautious than people realize. It's a very professional call. Well, and when I was watching your interview with Mark Benioff, I mean, he got so riled up, he almost sounded like another CEO you talked to, John Leisure at T-Mobile. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that this was a quarter that really was an amazing quarter. There was, uh, there was so much to like. Government spend was big. Retail was big. Europe was big. A gigantic Veterans uh, Administration contract, a nice U.S. Bank Corp contract, a contract that they couldn't even reveal that was their biggest one. Uh, a share take from Oracle. Oracle will disagree with that. But it wasn't all cylinders. It was, an, uh, as I said, it was a nine-cylinder mm. conference call on eight cylinders. All right. And saying in this area on stop trading on Squawk on the Street, you talked about IBM and a Morgan Stanley you note. Know, uh, Katie Hubert, whom I like very, very much in a very non-promotional way, put out a piece that might say that you could read as saying that IBM's gotten a level where you shouldn't sell it anymore, uh, and maybe that's the case. Uh, I thought it was good. I was, I was, it's funny because I was also I was going to do Western Digital before that because Western Digital is now in talks with Toshiba. I always thought that could, thought that could happen. We had a good trade Western Digital for Action Alerts. Then felt we had to go because the actual core business isn't that good. But watch that if the Western Digital gets the uh, and and its and its consortium does get Toshiba, it's very good for Western Digital. There's a big event today in New York, the Samsung Unpacked event. They're launching the Galaxy Note A. What a horrible year it's been for Samsung. Well, it, it's yeah. been horrible for that device, that but device. not for the stock. The stock's been great, and the company uh, is remarkable in, in its staying power, and, and its uh, and love, the lower end is love, and the phone has got this good curvature to it. Uh, I'm an Apple guy, but uh, uh, Samsung, they were down, but they were clearly not out. Mm. Speaking of Apple, there was a New York Times report that they're scaling back their self-driving car program. Yeah, you know, th this is one that alternately people like, and then people realize how much money it costs. And I look at how much money Google's put into Waymo, and that Waymo's the winner. Uh, they've got the architecture. Uh, there's no need to duplicate or go up against Waymo. It's, it, it's just not a smart thing to do. Mm. Jim, I want to move on to retail. There was news that Walmart products will now be available on Google Express. What did you but think about that? They've always been, um, but this is more of a tie-up. And I think that Google, that, uh, Google, the voice recognition isn't what it had, what what it needs to be. Mm. Uh, remember, Frank, Frank Blake, the instrumental CEO at Home Depot in terms of the turnaround, has said he thinks Alexa is a real threat. Mm. And, and so you do have to. Uh, Walmart needs Google to get better. Mm. Staying with retail, what did you make of Lowe's quarters? Pretty yeah, bad. Lowe's no, it wasn't that bad. It's just bad. I mean, because it was four percent comp stores. Um, it's just bad in relative to Home Depot and to Lowe's own expect expectations. I expect Lowe's trades lower than it is now. And, and Jim, as a gardener, you shop at Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, but Lowe's lines are too long, and I <laughs> tend to like Home Depot better. So my where I get go to my Home Depot is in Riverhead, Long Island, mm. and there's a Lowe's across the street from it. 
and when I go to the Lowe's, even though they do have some, uh, some of the planting's the same, they do have some better plants. To wait in line like that is to miss key gardening time. <laughs> All right, Jim, let's move on to earnings to watch. We have some more retail names, Ulta Beauty. Yeah, no, I, I mentioned that Ulta, Opco had a piece saying that Ulta's probably going to have to soften. Now, is Ulta like Starbucks, 64 down to 53, and then suddenly people feel like that perhaps uh, the stock is discounting that? Or is Ulta going to have a genuine shortfall and go dramatically lower from here? I don't know. The more we get pieces like Opco, uh, which basically rein in the expectations between now and when they report tomorrow, the more people feel better But uh, when they report. But Ulta has great loyalty program. Ulta has a business that's, on, that's challenged because department stores have been cutting price. Uh, but I would not count out Mar Mary Dillon. All right, another retailer reporting earnings tomorrow, Dollar Tree. Uh, you know what? The dollar stores, my uh, my friend Matthew Boss at Morgan Stanley has had the best coverage of those. I think Dollar Tree is the best of those. It's the one I go to. Uh, but retail has been so case by case. I now feel that uh, I've been sticking with TJX as the winner, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to go downscale other than to say that I think that Walmart's good. All right, and then Actual Alerts Plus holding Broadcom is reporting results as well. Yeah, there's a lot of analysts who've been saying buy the stock ahead. I hate that because that means the stock is run, not unlike Salesforce, which ran. But Salesforce delivered, and obviously I believe that Broadcom will deliver, or we wouldn't own it for the trust. All right, we'll look forward to your bulletins. And Jim, before we let you go, the Powerball jackpot is now over $700 million. Yeah. Where should people invest, whoever ends up winning? <laughs> you know, I, I've always found, and I've dealt with people who have won when I was at Goldman Sachs, you take the money up front, you take, don't take the long-term pay, uh, payments, and uh, you only need to get rich once, so don't screw it up. <laughs> Good advice from Jim Kramer. Thank you so much. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.